<laughs> it's kind of how I because I push the button, push the key, and then I look up, and it kind of probably had to look like. <laughs> um. I am. I am. I am so glad for this. I tell you. first video about this that I made, I was yelling the entire time, screaming at the camera for about four minutes. And the second version, the second video I made was a 20 minute long video. Every time I talk about this again, it's like, okay, it seems to get just a little bit more refined and, and it seems to be a better way to lay out the, the argument. So I'm trying again and we'll see. Um, if you're wondering what I what I pointed at, it's a it's like a it's a it's a vaporizer. So I do that instead of smoke. So um, it it heats up the weed to the temperature in which uh, the THC turns into a vapor instead of having to actually combust the weed and breathe in actual smoke. So. Um, but I, I get, I get really tired of being told that I, or just, just left-wingers being told that their support of Hillary, you know, it, it's like, like somehow that's an element an element, not the main reasons, an, an element to why Trump got elected because people were supporting Hillary. Look, after the primaries, you don't have another choice. You, you're, you're stuck with that candidate if you're voting for a Democrat. And you're stuck for that, that candidate if you're voting for a, a, you know, whatever candidate if, you, if you're a Republican. It's not, you know, many of us wanted Bernie Sanders, but we can see what Hillary did. We can see the corruption that Hillary did there. Here's what I, I don't understand how people can't seem to think about this. Okay. Different types of corruption affect the public differently. Hillary's corruption, as vast and huge as it was, especially that we can see in these emails, her type of corruption was not very likely to screw over the the common person okay her type of corruption wouldn't do that it, it would be we'd, we'd see a lot of stuff that we find awful but as far as it affecting the general public it it wasn't going to do much she was going to be a president that we wouldn't really notice any improvements really in anything but we also wouldn't notice uh, everything turning to shit either you know Oh, another corrupt president. She'd be, you know, a one-term president and we'd have someone else after that, right? Trump. It, it's just people somehow started believing in this propaganda. I'm going to call it propaganda. This this idea that, well, well when Trump does it, it's different than uh, what the Republicans have ever done through, you know, uh, the last, like, 50 years. Oh, it's, it's, it Trump's different because, well, he's coming kind of from an independent perspective. And then you see what his positions are. They're the very, very stereotypical right wing, you know, Republican type of positions. In fact, the ones that people go, oh, God, I hope they can never get a chance to do that. And now it's pretty blatant that that's what he's going to be attempting to do. And he has, the, the rest of the government is, is, has a Republican majority. Those of us who are minorities, and then the people who are not minorities, and people that are in the majority, but they, their perspective is often not taken seriously, and every time they try to state their perspective, they're called a radical feminist or an SJW or something like that, because, you know, um, 
you know, SJW somehow isn't one of these generalizations that get made towards the left anytime someone disagrees with a position here or there, um, you know, and we're supposed to just take it while if there are any generalizations made about those that tilt to the right, well, that's just fucking terrible. You know, you don't make those kinds of generalizations. We, only we can make generalizations, right? But for women and for minorities, the stuff that we have experienced, the insight that we have into what certain stances and behaviors translate to as far as how it affects our lives, we can see this shit. And those who haven't ever had to struggle with those types of things, those types of things that are specifically related to being within those demographics. And people oh, don't break people apart into demographics. Then how the fuck am I supposed to word this? You know, that's some of the things that gets me so angry at this. It's like... You complain, and rightfully so, about people changing the definition of the word racism. And you, you're like, well, how am I supposed to have this conversation? And yet, you're doing the same thing uh, by telling people, no, you can't, you can't break people apart into demographics. Well, how the hell is this supposed to be discussed then? You can't... It, and with demographics, there comes a certain amount of groupthink. And you can't... You can't tackle groupthink by only focusing on the individual. You have to focus on the group. You have to focus on the common things about that uh, that that group. You know? I wouldn't have nearly as much of a problem with people calling me an SJW if people who fall into this I don't know what to, I don't know what to label to use yet the alt right or the this the, the anti SJW or it, there's and it's and even that isn't necessarily that accurate but I can't seem to find any phrase to state for for the other side um you know I, I but I but I wouldn't be as annoyed at being someone calling me an SJW if I was able to say some phrase for the other side and not have you get your fucking panties in a twist. You know, the left is the one that's supposed, no matter if someone's reasonable, the left is the one that's, they're the ones that are supposed to to cower down and, and kiss ass and all that stuff. While the right is just supposed to be as blunt as they want and, you know, who fucking cares and asking them to try to be a little nicer. Oh, your political correctness gone mad. You know? I mean, that's one of the things that's, that's really annoying about this. People want, want to get rid of political correctness, but only the political correctness on the right. You see, what we're seeing at these universities, what we're seeing uh, from some, of, some people on the left, um, is what happens when you remove political correctness from the left. When the left stops being politically correct, this is what you see. Identity politics, um, people making huge declarations about huge, huge swaths of people. Yeah, that's the game the right has played for years. And the left got tired of it. We got tired of it. We got tired of you being the only ones allowed to not be politically correct. So let's stop being politically correct, all of us. Oh, no, we don't like that. Well, that's tough shit. You get what, you know, be careful what you wish for. And now that Trump has been elected, those of us, and everyone is just like, well, no more political correctness. Okay, fine. Let's see how you like it. Does it, do, do you enjoy this? Well, that's not what political correctness is. It, it is, though. Political correctness isn't about shutting up a, a, a viewpoint. It's about saying, well, if you're going to have this kind of viewpoint, at least try to make an effort to think about how it will affect the people that you're discussing it towards. You know, be reasonable. Be, be uh, 
uh, don't be bigoted in the way that you discuss this stuff. See, the more that you demand, the more that you're, it's like when we gave an inch, you took a mile when it comes to this sort of thing. And when the right takes a mile, then the left takes a mile. That's just how it goes. You're not going to be able to take this mile and not expect the left to take this mile. Don't like it? Well, maybe you should start pushing towards us being reasonable. Trump getting elected was the ultimate in saying, fuck being reasonable. So, you know, people aren't being reasonable anymore. Be careful what you wish for. Oh, but it's only bad when the left does it. You see, the very things that are being said that, you know, people are, are but, but, but like the, the reason why I made those videos uh, uh, talking about, you know, oh, white people, right? Is because of how much the mindset that four years ago would have been laughed off of YouTube and was and were the videos and channels were terminated for shoving forth these kinds of viewpoints, the Marmite Man 4s and the uh, um, it, the mindsets of uh, Pat Condell. Pat Condell found a good way to do it that, that didn't get him uh, uh, kicked off the platform. But, you know, four years ago, this stuff, the people get kicked off the platform all the fucking time for it. Now it's become commonplace, and yet people are complaining that, well, well, we're not really having our say. And I'm like, excuse me, did you did you forget what things were like before, you know, two years ago? I don't know what exactly went on two years ago because that's about that's just right around when this started. I can hypothesize, I could come up with with some conspiracy theories, but we don't know exactly what happened two years ago. You can say, well, it just compounded, and by that time, people were fed up. And it's just like, but what made people fed up at that by that time? What was what was the straw that broke the camel's back? When did this start to occur? Because the more extreme that those on the right, and the more extreme that the anti-SJWs uh, shove things forth, the the more extreme the the left is going to get. Because this, this uh, socializing, I don't know what you call it, whether you call it a doctrine, these, these, these rules that we used to have to follow have been dumped. It started to go away two years ago and Trump getting elected was the ultimate in, do, in that happening. People are saying to me, well... Kazum, you've changed, you've, you've just kind of went off the deep end after Trump got elected. And, and yeah, I have. I have got, gone off the deep end. Um, I, uh, I see minorities losing in such a big way. And we're not going to go down without a fight. And we're also not going to watch this country go down without a fight. I mean, you all knew what Trump stood for when you voted for him. You knew what he stood for. But somehow you were willing to, to look past those things. Somehow. Because you were scared of Hillary's corruption. Was I scared of Hillary's corruption? Yeah. I, want, I wanted Bernie. And Hillary and the Hillary's corruption and the corruption of the DNC, they made it so, you know, Bernie wasn't an option. But again, the type of corruption that Hillary has is not something that was, it, it was barely going to affect everyday people. And we've had so many corrupt politicians through the, uh, uh, throughout the years, so many.
Well, not this time. Not this time. We won't stand for it. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm betting there is even more corruption uh, surrounding uh, Bill Clinton's administration. I bet there is even more corruption. If we were to find a way to look into all this, get all this insider information, we'd find even more there. Because the presidential office uh, forces people to be corrupt. and Or... You know, people have to be corrupt to go into that, to get that position. And Trump is no different. And I don't know why people are wearing blinders to this sort of thing and acting like, you know, they don't know or they didn't know that, you know, Trump was corrupt. And then there's the people, oh, you know, it's not corruption if you're honest about it. It's like... Hey, yeah, uh, hey, hey, going over to a friend's house. Yeah, oh, yeah, I stole $10 from you, uh, you know, but it should be cool. And your friend's like, uh, no, you stole money from me. Why did you do this? Well, you know, I, I, told, I, I told you I was up, up front and honest about it. You should be fine with it. And that's that's the, the reasoning that people seem to use. You know, a lot of this is, again, about Trump, about Trump getting elected, I should say. Not necessarily about Trump himself. But it's about the social phenomenon revolving around Trump. It's also about people ignoring deplorable things. You know, because at least it's not Hillary. Those of us who are minorities know what signs to look for. We've seen it too many times. Trump is about the worst we have ever seen in, in our lifetimes anyway. Probably in two of our lifetimes. And that's another phrase when people say, oh, you're just salty. What is that supposed to mean? We're angry that Trump was elected. Yes, okay, and? What is the point in saying that? Well, it's another one of those phrases to get people to shut up. It's a shaming tactic. I was a mess for that first week after Trump was elected. I mean, a complete mess. I thought I might even, I thought I might have to go into a mental institution. I was, my mother was worried. Uh, my friends were worried. I had a conversation in here, in, in, the, in, in, uh, not in the, and it was in the other room, the one next door when I was still in that room. She was crying and saying, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. Yeah, I went off the deep end after Trump got elected. And I had to make a choice. Either I'll either end my life or become an activist for the things that I truly believe in. And I chose the latter, fortunately. Maybe some of you might say unfortunately. But... If those in my demographic are going to go down like I said earlier in this video if we're gonna go down we're going to we're not going to go down without a fight
some of you don't seem to want to accept the significance of what a lot of minorities uh, go through and what women go through. You just don't want to put on other people's shoes for some reason. You can't imagine that certain things would affect people a lot, uh, so much. As I've said in other videos, there's just the element of uh, being able to walk down the sidewalk somewhere and hold hands with someone you love. You know, you you get to do that without any any worry about being mugged just because you are holding hands with someone. You know, being mugged, being beat up, being uh, 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 having uh, slurs thrown at you. You don't have that worry. You don't even you don't even remotely know what that's like. The closest thing to that is the stuff that's going on at these colleges. You know, and I'm I will say that these things being done towards white people at these colleges is not acceptable. It's not. I've never tried to defend those things. But what I have stated is that what you are experiencing is you know is a f f is a fraction of what a lot of minorities have had to deal with their entire lives and yet when we talk about our experiences we're told we're just being SJWs black people being told that uh, no police aren't treating them any differently then we get footage of them being treated differently. And then people will still do, well, you know, that's not really definitive proof of this. Um, I don't believe that black people are being treated differently. I just think they're, uh, they're doing identity politics. I mean, if you're a straight white guy, right? Straight, white, cisgender guy, right? Have you ever had to worry about people thinking that you're a thug or a criminal because you wore the wrong outfit? But I understand there, there are exceptions to it. Like if you know, you oh, you went around wearing a hockey mask? Yeah, it's, uh, people are gonna kind of wonder about that. You're wearing one of those, I forget what those hats, stocking cap things, but they have just little holes for the for the eyes and the little one for the mouth, right? Um, or the nose, right? And you're walking around wearing one of those, yeah, yeah, yeah people are going to probably think, you know, it doesn't, that doesn't matter who is, is, is wearing that. Um, but just generally, there's, you don't have this, this issue where, you know, if you wore something uh, like, you, you could wear just about anything you want and won't be given the same problem as black people do. Now, granted, you'll have those people who say, I need, to, I need to say the exceptions, or, you know, oh, you, <laughs> fine. The exceptions are there are some black people who get all pissy because people are doing, oh, cultural appropriation. <laughs> And I think it's sad that on this platform, I have to speak more against the left than the right. Or people will say that I am an SJW cuck. You know, I've spoken against a lot of this shit that the left has done. And I will speak against that when I do see it. My focus is going to be on what right-tilting people, right-tilting philosophies, right-tilting viewpoints are doing. That's going to be my primary focus. But don't think for a moment that I don't have a problem with what some people on the left have been doing.
Don't think that for a moment. I'm not going to condone those types of things. Right now, it seems those are the only things that we're allowed to talk about. It's depressing. And I think I hear someone at the door. So I am going to go investigate. 